All right, so I am going to be doing a festival braid on her. Festival hair is like so in right now. So I figured that would be a good one to show. She's already got really gorgeous texture in her hair. The only thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit more at her roots up here. And I'm going to add some of the Dry Volume Burst 3. If you haven't tried this, this is another one, Cassie, that I use all the time. Oh yeah. Really good for just like gritting up those roots. Nothing is harder to work with when it comes to styling than like silky soft roots. You can have good texture through the ends, but if the roots are silky, it's so hard to work with. So I'm just going to apply some of this pretty liberally up here. And then I'm going to get this divided into three sections. Okay, my first section is basically just gonna be the mohawk. Maybe a little bit wider than the mohawk. Okay, and then my second section will be right below that. Actually, I'm gonna do a little bit more in here. So it's, it's more of like the parietal ridge and up for this first section. This is all going to be going back. So I wanna make sure I have enough up here to create that, that good uh, volume. Okay, and then the second section will be right below that. Following that same line. And then our third section will just be everything left on the bottom. Okay, so I am going to start in the back with just your standard topsy tail elastic braid. I like to do these underneath because they create so much bulk and then I'll detail and make it unique with everything on top, okay? I'm sure you guys have seen these all over Instagram, but if not, <laughs> so you basically just um, take one piece from each side, bring those into the center, and flip that inside out. Okay, so I'm gonna flip that inside out, and then just pull on these. So with a bridal braid, if this were a bride, I probably wouldn't be pulling these like this. I would be taking them down more. But since this is gonna be a little bit edgier, I'm gonna keep it a little bit tighter. So I'm just gonna repeat that going all the way down. Um, a lot of times when I do this sort of, or this part of the braid, I like to have them look down because then I can make sure it's laying really flat on their neck. Nothing is worse than when they're like standing straight and it's like doing this, you know? So I like to have them look down while I do this part. Okay, so same thing, flip that inside out, and then just scrunch that up so those sit right next to each other, and you hide those elastics as you go. And another difference, if this were a bridal braid, is I probably would be like pulling on these and softening them and making them very big um, to make it a little bit more romantic, but I'm actually keeping hers fairly small just to keep it a little bit edgier. How do you guys like this curly hair over here? I'm low-key obsessed with curly hair. I think in another life, I, I had curly hair. Um, as a stylist, though, curly hair is something kind of new to me, right? And, and coloring and styling. Um, obviously, Brittany and I look very different, so not having hair like that, it's kind of hard to really totally understand it right away, right? Um, I'm so thankful for the education and training that I've had that's made me more comfortable and confident with curly hair. But I think it's something that we all should put ourselves out there more and really get to know because curly hair is a very different world. Um, and it's beautiful. And it's amazing. And if we can get our clients to love and embrace their natural texture, how exciting would that be? And again, I think having a professional give you recommendations on products, and not only just products, but what I was just doing is taking a look at Brittany's face shape. So if I pull her hair away, look at how strong her jawline is. 
beautiful jawline, striking. That's a feature, even in styling, that's something I want to recommend that she maybe incorporates into her regimen. So she typically wears her hair kind of centered like this and forward, which I think is so hot. It works. We love it. But if she wants to try something different, I actually think I'm going to take her hair to the side and do something asymmetrical with it and really pump it out. Um, so I'm going to help her love her frizz, too. We're going to use a couple of products to help her love her frizz. But doing something asymmetrical, ugh. It just brings out that jawline beautifully. And maybe this is something she's tried, but seeing me use products to really perfect it and finesse it, that's professional. That's really giving your clients something that can totally change how they wear their hair and how they love their hair. So I'm going to be working through. I'm just kind of being patient with it, um, adding moisture first. So our Lux One Leave-In is my go-to product now. I'm just taking my time to really um, take each curl family and moisturize it. Um, and then from there, I'm going to use our dry texture spray, expand it out, create a totally different silhouette, and show her a different transitional style. Lovely. That's going to be so cute on her. I'm excited. Okay, so see my faux braid that I'm creating here? What's nice about these two is that they're very secure. You can get a lot of volume, and it's not going to fall out because you have elastics going all the way down. Okay, I'm going to... Leave a little bit out at the ends so it doesn't just come down to like a little point. A lot of times what I'll do with this elastic down here to hide it, either you can just keep scrunching it and like pulling the hair to kind of tuck it underneath, or sometimes I'll like loop a small section back up through and sort of hide it that way. Just something to break it up at the bottom, make it a little bit more fun. This is looking super cute. Okay, I'm messing this up now with my hands. I want the shape to obviously, you know, kind of do one of these. So I'm gonna widen it a little bit more up here. And then I'm going to kind of check it from the sides. So this part's like sticking out just a tad. So I'm gonna throw an elastic in there or a bobby pin. And then um, we'll let down our next section, our middle section, okay? So now is where I'm gonna start sort of layering into my braid underneath. So I'm going to give her some good texture through here at the roots with the Dry Texture Spray 6. And then I'm going to do two braids down the back and incorporate those into here. So my first step is just giving her a little bit more volume and texture up here. A lot of times when people see braids that are so like intricate, it can be really like intimidating. Um, but I found the best way to make braids like really unique is to just layer them like this, you know, rather than doing everything at once. Just layer, 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 and get creative with each layer that you do. That way every one of your braids is gonna be different and your clients will always end up going like, oh, well, how in the world did she do that? Because it's not just your standard braid. The layering braids, I think, are one of those things that look really intricate, but at the end of the day, when you actually go to execute it, it's one of the easier things yeah. to do, right? That's always nice when you can do something easy that's like very impressive to your clients, because then they're like, dang, <laughs> dang. Okay, Steph, since you're here, I have to start asking you some questions for my own personal curiosity, but I'm sure you guys want to know too. So when I first kind of started knowing Steph, actually, I started seeing her before I even knew who she was because every picture that a client was bringing in of an upstyle that they wanted was likely one of her. <laughs> so I, I knew of her before I actually even met her, but um, I feel like, Steph, I met you probably about three or four years ago. How is... How did you grow in, in that time frame? Like, what is, what would you offer in terms of advice to someone who's kind of starting in the industry or wanting to grow on social media? Because you've, you've totally taken off on that platform. Yeah, social media has definitely been a game changer for me. Um, it was kind of one of those things at first I was, like, not excited about. I'm sure there's those of Anyone you... Anyone relate to that? Yeah. You're not excited about social media? Yeah, and I still have, like, a love-hate relationship with it, you know? I kind of secretly wish that it would, like, die, kind of. But I'm like, okay, it's really good for business, so I guess it's good. <laughs> but it's been very a very helpful tool. Um, what's nice about social media is that it's, like, everyone's on there. So for me, I started 
just by uploading all of my work to Pinterest. Um, brides, as well as anyone just looking for inspiration for their hair, are always going to Pinterest for things. So I just started uploading my stuff on there. And um, then from there, you know, you can link your pins to your Instagram or your website or whatever. And so I got a lot of traction that way, just kind of like directing a lot of my following from Pinterest over to Instagram. Um, one of the biggest things that helped me grow my following was just sharing knowledge. Um, people love it when you're generous. I mean, who doesn't love free education, right? So the minute I started like giving tips or, you know, even just like time-lapse videos, stuff like that, I felt like my following took off a ton. So that's something I would definitely recommend. Like if you're trying to get into the social media world and you want to like, you know, grow your following or whatever, start sharing some of the knowledge that you have. Um, people will be grateful, you know? I mean, I always love it when other stylists do that. So yeah, and then, um, okay, real quick, just combining these three braids into one. So what I'm gonna do is just braid all of these together. Okay. I'm gonna take out these bobby pins. Okay, so a couple things I can do. I want to give this a little more volume, so I'm going to hold the end here and then just take a small piece. I'm just like pulling on a small section and scrunching this up just to make that even more bohemian. Okay, so sometimes what I'll do is just pin this on the outside, which is I think what I'll do today. Or if I want, like if her hair was a little bit longer still, I might like weave it in and out of my elastics. So what I'm gonna do in this instance is just bobby pin it into the braid underneath. And I'm gonna do that by bobby pinning into the elastics that are already there. So like here I can see an elastic. I'm going to put my pin through this section and through that elastic. That's gonna make it a lot more secure than just pinning into this like open hair down here. So I'm gonna do that a couple more times. And then I'll kind of curl these ends, fluff them up. And then we'll let down our top section. Okay, what was I saying? Were we talking about Instagram? Yes. Yeah. Um, even though I do have a love-hate relationship with it, I can't deny how helpful it's been and how much like business it's gotten me. Like locally, not locally, you know, it's just like, it's just good all around to be a part of it. Um, it's been a great tool and that's how Kenra found me too. It is. Social media. Plus, I feel like seeing this upstyle versus the first one you did, I think it really speaks to how upstyling has kind of changed in the industry, right? Like, for a while, I feel like upstyling was just special occasion styling, wedding yeah. styles, prom styles. But now, I think it's more the norm. I think it's more a part of what we offer our clients on a regular basis, or at least it should be. So how has that changed? Yeah, well, I mean, now, just styles in general are a lot more accessible because they're not as like, you know, unless you're doing like a full on glamorous updo or whatever, a lot of times doing something like this or something more casual is just so popular right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, you get people wanting hair not done, not only like for their wedding, but for, you know, if they're going to a music festival or if they're going to, you know, I don't even just like a party or, you know, I mean, braids are so in still. People are all about those braids, and braids are obviously very accessible for the everyday client. So yeah, it's definitely like the days of like, you know, plastering every piece in place and crispifying it to your head and wearing your fancy ball gown, you know? They're gone, those days are gone. Okay, I'm gonna let down my top section now. Are we liking so far? It's kind of fun. Okay, so this is gonna go all back. I'm gonna give her some good volume up here. Okay, let me turn her around. I always like to do the front. If I'm doing the front all back, I like to do it from the front. Just so you can see what you're doing. Have you ever like focused only on the back and then you turn them around and you're like, yes. What have I done? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> 
That's part of the reason why I love using a mirror too. I know people, some people hate using a mirror because they feel I was like, just going to say, I feel like yeah. sometimes I forget about my mirror. <laughs> well, some people are like, oh, I don't like it because my clients just sit there and like do this the whole time, you know? <laughs> but like I like to see what I'm doing. Even if you get clients like that occasionally. Okay. So all of this I'm going to get together in an elastic. How about like right in here? So it meets with, I don't want to do it too high because I don't want this gapping right here. So I'm going to meet it like right in there. Okay, we'll get that in an elastic. And then I'm going to wrap that elastic in a piece of hair. And probably pin it in place a little bit. Just checking my shape from the side here. Okay, so let's get this wrapped, and then I'm going to do the same thing, finish a braid through here, and then incorporate that, and then we will be all set. Oh, while you're finishing up, can I jump in and talk about yes. Brittany's color um, and her style? So do you guys see how we just totally transformed her look? And I love this profile view is probably one of my favorites. Yeah, that's so like, look cute. at the shape we create here. Love it. Takes that same haircut, takes that same color palette, um, and placement and just gives her something a little bit different and fresh. And I also think, you know, expanding curl like this, when I first started learning about curl, obviously the more you touch it, the more it frizzes out. But sometimes when you're expanding curl, that can be a beautiful thing. And that can be the difference between, you know, a more controlled finish and a soft finish. And helping someone kind of be a little bit more comfortable with that through product can be great. So. I balanced my moisture and texture with dry texture spray offset with our diamond deflect spray, which has a little bit more moisture to it. Um, but can we cue her before pictures so we can see and talk about her color? So just a solid dark palette. Um, we know naturally in terms of color theory, curl absorbs more light, right? The surface itself just absorbs light, whereas straight hair reflects light. So by adding accents, this is a great seasonal change, I think, um, technique you can offer clients. If you don't offer your clients changes seasonally, you should absolutely think about it because that's also an opportunity for us to show our professionalism and also our knowledge of the industry and trends and color palettes. So this accent work was done and she was lifted with our cream lightener, which is ideal for curly hair because it's so gentle. So with curly hair, low and slow is the way to go. If you have to use higher than 20 volume, do the result progressively because otherwise you will totally disrupt their curl pattern and we want to maintain that as much as possible. She was glazed, also using a combination of our eight natural ultra ash in addition to our VP rapid toner. And I almost, I like to refer to this palette as kind of like an antique gold, right? So embracing warmth, but softening warmth, giving it that cool tonality, but not totally eliminating it or lifting past it so that it can exist because it definitely wears better on her skin tone. Um, I might have you go take a walk up to the front. What do you guys think? So cute. Okay, and I am almost done here as well. I'm just checking her profile. One thing that can happen a lot when you're wisping hair all back is it can kind of start to fall flat. So what I like to do is sort of hide some pins in here and push everything towards the center so that it has more of an upwards flow instead of looking like it's sagging. Same with this in here. I'm going to push this up towards the center. Keep that a little bit tighter. Oh, so cute. It looks so good. Okay, let's bring you up here as well. May I have you come up? Yeah, Angelica, to you too. Okay, so with that last section, let me just have you turn around real quick. Oh my gosh, that's dope. Do you guys see the back of yeah, that? Yeah, I love that. That is so cool. So this last, this is my, my piece, right, my top section. I just did a braid with that and then scrunched it up and just used it to create some bulk right in here because I was feeling like right there was a little flat. So there you have it. You guys like? So festival.